Hey guys, Akil Mohadeen here, and I'm going to be talking about another YouTube video. Um, today we're going to be talking about what happened at Google I.O. 2014. Okay, so let's just get started. I'm going to try and condense the whole four-hour presentation into probably a short ten minutes, hopefully less. So, kicking off the whole thing is Android L Preview. This is the next version of Android. It's not like a jelly bean or a cream cake or whatever you guys want to call it. It's not a food. It's just called Android L. Um, it features this new thing called Material Design, which allows pixels to kind of jump off, off the screen. It's like instead of the usual X and Y coordinates of the pixels, they're going to be adding a new thing, a Z, a tiny one. They're going to call it Elevation. It's not to be confused with 3D. It's not the same thing. Um, in elevation, they're just going to be using mi mostly shading to kind of make pictures look like they're jumping off. They're, like they're above everything else. That's the whole point of material design. Next, animations are now happening at 60 frames per second instead of 30 frames per second, which is the average, what usually happens, 30 frames per second. So 30, 60 frames per second is now the new default. All right, now there's completely redesigning all of their apps so like the gmail app and the google plus app all those apps are getting taken out and giving completely new designs and frankly i kind of like some of the designs that they're going with um they look good also notification is going to be a really good thing with android l it's going to be using the google now format like cards and they're going to happen as soon as you unlock the device so the cards are going to show up on the lock screen so it's going to be like a card like text message from Bob and it's gonna say like the part of the text message and then another card like Facebook status update and something like that right and also heads up notifications so it's gonna pop up over whatever you're doing so kinda of like an iOS where like the little um, notification kinda of pops down and just covers a sliver of the content so you can see what the notification is that's what's gonna be happening in Android L also it's a really nice feature is personal unlocking and it's happening in Android L. It looks at the location of where you are and Bluetooth devices nearby to see if it really is you. So say like you're wearing a smart watch and it's connected with your phone or at least your phone recognizes that you always walk around with that Bluetooth device and then so when you pull out your smartphone it will automatically unlock with you because it notices that that Bluetooth device is on you. But say you take the watch off and it's 20 feet away from you and it, you can't read it the phone does not pick up the Bluetooth device then it's not gonna unlock automatically it's going to ask you for a pin number or you know slide whatever it is that you have set alright also a performance upgrade with ART Android Runtime Compiler it's the new default compiler for the code it's two times as fast as Dalvik which was the old one it's more memory efficient and 64-bit architecture which is something that we saw on iOS and something everybody should be excited for. And so that means that your computer and your smartphone are both running at the same bit architecture. It's fun to see what they can really come with, come up with this. All right, better battery life is still there's still going to be better battery life even with all these new shading and elevation features. Part of it is going to be coming from that new compiler, it's going to be more efficient more memory efficient if I didn't say that already the new compiler is more memory efficient and they say it's the biggest release to date and the developer previews for the Nexus 5 and Nexus 7 are already available today and there's also final feature more security in the Google Play Store okay guys so next up is Android Wear it's the platform the OS for wearables it's designed to decrease the number of times you take your phone out of your pocket which on average is 125 times a day so 125 times a day you take your phone out of your pocket turn it on just to see if you have a new notification 
now this OS is going to automatically make it easier so that you don't have to keep constantly taking your phone out of your pocket. It also uses this new material design so it looks like some notification will be like popping up off other ones. And it's in sync with your phone. So say you swipe away a text message on your smartwatch, then it'll automatically go away on your phone too. Devices that will be using this new OS is the LG G Watch, which is available today, the Samsung Gear Live, which is available today, and the Moto 360, which will be available later in the summer, which is the one that everyone should be excited for. I'm personally most excited for the Moto 360 because it looks the best and personally is the coolest. But let's talk about this new Samsung Gear Live just for a little bit. The Samsung Galaxy Gear is basically the same thing. It looks pretty much identical on the outside, except in the Samsung Galaxy Gear, it runs that OS made by Samsung, but in the Samsung Gear Live, it runs Android Wear. So I personally think that Android Wear is a better OS, and Android Wear is compatible with all Android devices, where the Samsung Galaxy Gear is just compatible with Samsung devices. So what was the point in unveiling both of them? Next is Android Auto. It's supposed to simplify navigation, communication, and music within the car, which means that a smartphone interface will be cast onto the car screen, which means, you know, most cars have a screen right there in front where they give their own maps, usually provided by Garmin, and but instead it will be using Google Maps and will be constantly connected with your smartphone. Um, everything is voice animated, so you can keep your hands on the wheel at all times. And it's kind of like the AirPlay sort of thing, I think. No, CarPlay, something like that, that iOS came out with in OS X Yosemite. Basically the same thing, but for Android, but they have 40 car partners in Android Auto. Next up is Android TV. It's voice enabled, and it is a set-top box that you put, you know, you connect it to your TV. It's kind of like an Apple TV, except it uses Google Play Music and Google Play Games and Google Play Movies and whatever. And it supports Google Cast which means that it supports Chromecasting. And the TVs um, open the same as this Android L sort of thing. It supports 4K already out of the box, 4K support. And you plug it in like an Apple TV. And Sony Sharp TP Vision will all be supporting this um, thing, this Android TV thing. But they'll have their boxes automatically built into their TV, so you do not have to buy an external one. And last thing for Android TV is that's going to be controlled with your smartphone, tablet, or smartwatch. Um, Android wearable. So it acts as a remote, so you basically swipe through your Google Play content on the TV with your watch, your smartphone, or your tablet. And it'll basically swipe through your movies and you click on the one you want and it'll play on the TV. Okay, next up is Chromecast. It's an update for Chromecast. So what happens is it's a Chromecast is now available in 15 countries. Um people who want to use Chromecast do not need to be connected to your Wi-Fi per se. So say you have a friend that comes over to your house and they just went on vacation, they want to show you all your all their new pictures. You don't need to give them your Wi-Fi password for them to show their pictures on the screen through Chromecast. It'll automatically be connected. And now with Chromecast you can mirror your Android screen. It's available on a handful of devices but more will be coming soon and basically it mirrors everything on the Android screen up to the TV. This is a really nice feature since people had to root their devices beforehand in order to get this. Next up is Chromebooks. So, this Chromebook is something that I'm really excited for. I was with Chromebooks from probably the first Samsung. The Samsung one that was at the top of the line. I saw that one and I thought this idea is so good. You know, it really becomes something great. And ever since the beginning, people have been saying if there's some way Google could make this um, run Android apps, then it would really be worth it. But then they didn't do that. And then they did okay. Chrome, Chromebooks were still selling pretty well. And you know what? They are really top sellers on Amazon, but now there's Android app support. It's not 
total Android app support. More will be coming through slowly because it's very hard to make them compatible with each other. But they did show off at Google I.O. Evernote, Pinterest, and Flipboard are already done and available. Also, another co really cool feature for Chromebooks is that smartphones can now unlock your Chromebook. So it uses that personal unlocking feature that smartphones were using for Bluetooth watches devices, except Chromebooks will look, so smartphones would look at Chromebooks and smartwatches and location. Chromebooks will look at location, smartphones, and smartwatches. So if you have your smartphone in your pocket, then it, the Chromebook will read each other and say, oh, that is, say, like, that's my Chrome, that's my smartphone. So Akil's smartphone says, well, Akil's smartphone is next to him, so Chromebook will automatically unlock. You don't need to type in your Gmail password to unlock it. Now, say you take that phone away, then now you do need to press your Gmail um, password in. But most people have their phones with them. Also, if your phone is connected with each other with that personal unlocking feature being used, if that was working, then this feature will also work. The next one I'm about to say, which is notifications will now pop up on your Chromebook which means that if you get a text message on your Chromebook then it'll show up on I mean if you get a text message on your phone then it'll show up on your Chromebook this is a really cool feature and it's something that was also unveiled in OS X Yosemite but it just adds more and more value to the Chromebook because now if you already live in the Android hub or the Google hub which I already do then this makes the Chromebook such a great great device just to be using and you know now that the Android apps are coming through and now that you can do all this notification stuff with the smartphone and personal unlocking it makes the Chromebook a really nice buy especially with that you know $300 price tag you cannot beat that and it was amazing by itself without these features but with these features it's just you know it's still in like you know automatic buy territory impulse buy territory for most people but now it's actually a really, really good buy. So, anyways, that was my thoughts on whatever happened at Google I.O. If you have any questions, go ahead and email me or put a comment down in the description, and I will certainly get back to you. Remember to like and subscribe, and I will catch you guys in the next one. Bye.